for week one of the reset. Everybody say the reset. There's something about reset. You know, the word renew in Isaiah chapter 41 talks about a new strength that we have access to, but there's a renewed side of walking with the Lord that we get to encounter. There's a new beginning and there's a reset. There's a start again, a do-over. And there's something about the reset. If there's an issue with your phone, they encourage you before you start troubleshooting and doing anything to do a hard reset. And so this is the Reset Series. We're kicking it off bold and strong. And today I'm going to charge and challenge you as we kick off a new year and set up our foundation for what's next. But the Reset is, and this is kind of our overall kind of overarching uh, word in this series. It's called yield. Everybody say yield. Now we know yield when you're driving and we know yield when people stop we're like, it's yield. You don't have to hit your, you don't have to stop. You got to keep going. But the yield actually has two different meanings in this context. The first one is to yield a harvest. How many of y'all ready for this season of your life to become your harvest season? Come on. All the seed that we put in the ground in 23 and continue to, but to yield a harvest is one uh, definition of the word yield. But our other uh, angle that we're coming at for reset is to yield, to surrender, to bow before God to get in his presence, which is why I'm really excited that we're kicking off 21 days of prayer and fasting today. Look at the person next to you and say, I didn't know it started today. I did. I'll be really honest. I already had a bowl of cereal. Amen. And whatever way you have decided to fast, you can go to hopecity.com slash 21 days to see the vision behind what we're doing. Here's the thing. Our incredible team, give it up for our creative production, our film team, our... They, they filmed a devotional for you. Say, for me? Yeah, for you. They filmed a devotional for you every single day for 21 straight days. We have a word from the Lord downloaded from heaven for your life. You can tune in. Go to, again, hopecity.com slash 21 days. It'll be on our YouTube channel. I want to challenge you. If you've never done this before, do it this year. Jump in and really lean into the presence of God. Second Chronicles chapter 7 says, you see me going through my database, Second Chronicles <laughs> chapter seven says, if my people, say I'm his people, who are called by my name, how many of y'all are called by his name, come on, if they will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wickedness, I will hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. How many of y'all believe with the unrest that we've experienced the upcoming political season that we're all gonna walk through. How many of y'all are believing God to heal our land? Come on, to show up and do a work in our schools, to show up and do a work in our government, to show up and do a work in our cities, in our city council. Listen, my prayer is that God is gonna show up and breathe and do what he has promised according to his word. But here's our part. If my people, it's a choice, humble themselves, it's a choice, we're not gonna make any of you pray. We're not, we have a whole team that was gonna come to your door and knock on the door and be like, are you praying today? Be like, good Lord. No, but here, here's our prayer, that you would humbly say, God, I want to open up my hands, open-handed, I wanna open up my heart, and I wanna start this year off strong. So it kicks off officially today. There's different ways to fast. Uh, Jackie and I do a, a sunrise to sunset. Uh, I'm gonna praise his name, if you know that song, it's kind of funny. Um, but we, we, we do sunrise to sunset. So we get up in the morning, we pray all throughout the day, and then we eat one meal a day when the sun sets. And thank God that we're in the winter season, so it's a little earlier. Amen. <laughs> I'm just being transparent, okay? There's different ways to pray. Here's two amazing opportunities that we're giving the church for the first time ever. Uh, one, we always do it, and that is our Saturday morning prayer. So next Saturday the 13th, the Saturday after the 20th, we're gonna gather here at West Houston, over here in the chapel, at our Woodlands campus, and then we have a Katy location as well that we're gonna be praying. All that information is on hopecity.com slash 21 days. We gather at 9 a.m. as a church family and we pray. But here's something we've never done before. Every single day, Monday through Friday, for the next three weeks, say three weeks, we're gonna be gathering at our headquarters. And we're gonna be praying with our staff from 9.30 to 10.30, and we wanna open it up to, to, to our church. If you wanna stop by and pray, can't make it every day, but the prophet MC Hammer said, we have to pray just to make it today. So if you wanna, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I'm on one. Maybe it's because I'm lighter and I haven't seen my neck in three years. But... <laughs> 
I was concerned I had a tattoo under there that I didn't know about. I was like, oh Lord. Anyways, so we're gonna be praying every day, 9.30 to 10.30, and you're invited. Now some would say, including our staff, what if the whole church shows up? Then we're in the middle of a revival. Come on, somebody. But we're gonna make room and we're gonna figure it out. So starting tomorrow morning, 9.30 to 10.30, you are welcome. 5300 West Sam Houston Parkway. It's a mile and a half from here. If you're watching at our other campuses, drive in and be a part. Monday through Friday, the next three weeks. Everybody got it? Look at the person next to you and say, I'm ready to pray. Come on. All right, we're going to jump into the word today for week number one of the reset. And I'm going to go all the way to the end, the last chapter of the Bible for a moment. We're going to be reading in the book of Revelation. By the way, if you're a student of the Bible, it's Revelation, not Revelations. It drives me crazy. It's like saying Illinois. The S is silent. I don't know why. Anyways, Revelation, we're going to go all the way to the end because this is who God is. The Bible says in Revelation 1, verse 8 on the screens, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I'm the one who is, who always was, and who is to come, the Almighty One. Come on, give me praise for the reading of that because that is who he is now, if you've been a part of Hope City, I love to have an anchor verse, and the anchor verse for week one of the reset is found in Isaiah 26, verse three. It says, you will keep, I love this, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Everybody put your hands on your head for a minute and say, my mind is fixed on Jesus. Come on, close your eyes and say, my thoughts are his thoughts. Because when I change the way I think, I'll change the way I speak, and it ultimately will change my life. Look at the person next to you and say, the sermon title for week one is New Year, New Mindset. Look at your second choice and say, they didn't hear me. <laughs> it's New Year, New Mindset. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, today as we lean into the reset and we yield to your presence. God, we want a new year, new mindset. New year, new mindset. We don't want to carry the old way of thinking, the toxicity, the things that have once held us captive and bound. We want to lay all that at your feet and ask God to give us a mind to understand today ears to hear you, most importantly, a heart ready to receive. Shout amen if you receive it. The legend, Smith Wigglesworth said, the devil, knows if he, the devil knows if he can capture your thought life, he has won a mighty victory over you. Because you, we can't help, uh, the truth is thoughts are gonna come in, but we, can, we can't control them coming in, but we can do something when they get in there. We don't have to keep them in our head. A, a bird can fly over our head, but we have a choice of keeping it from making a nest up there, right? And so these thoughts come in, and that's why we have to redirect these thoughts. New year, new mindset. Have you ever had something that you left unchecked or unguarded? Like something that maybe you knew you needed to deal with, Maybe you had dealt with it, but then it just got a little too heavy, and you got to the point where you just kind of acted like you just, it was out of sight, out of mind. You just decided to ignore it. Have you ever had that light? I forget the name of it. Oh, yeah, the check engine light. <laughs> how many of y'all actively have a check engine light on in your car? Okay, how many of y'all are, are literally consistently ignoring it? Like, you're like, how many of y'all have gone so far as to, like, put something up to block it? <laughs> <laughs> because at nighttime, when your eyes are trying to fix to the darkness, the red light is just like, I know. And then you're like, you're putting somebody's business card there, like some electric tape, like something that honestly shouldn't go unchecked. And you don't have to be a mechanic to know how to fix that. You just need to figure out on YouTube how to just remove the bulb. <laughs> like, or you always, all of us have that friend that's like, oh, that's not a big deal. Like, you're not even a mechanic. Oh, seriously, it's not a big deal. Your, your gas cap is probably just not fully tightened. You said it's the engine light? Nah, nah, that's nothing. All right, let's go. How do you drive? <laughs> that's how confident I am that your car is gonna make it and your engine is literally falling apart. So before um, Pastor Jackie and I stepped into uh, the role of pastoring, for those of you who don't know our journey, we used to travel literally all over the world, internationally and nationally. We would travel and do music 
and evangelism. We were preaching the gospel, and we ended up traveling and living about 200 days a year in a bus. Some of you are like, that's my dream, until you do it. Ooh. <laughs> the Flying Jays and those truck stops are glamorous about twice, amen. <laughs> so I remember we were in this bus, and we would stop, and people would say, who's in that bus? And I would be like, Karen Underwood. They'd be like, Carrie Underwood? And I said, no, Karen Underwood. We're traveling a show. She does rushing nesting dolls. Like it's a, or <laughs> Pastor Jackie would be walking in with sunglasses and people would be like, who is that? And I'd say, that's Reba. <laughs> Reba McIntyre. So this light pops up on the bus and, and uh, I'll be honest. I saw it. I, I, I Googled it. I called the company and they said, you, you need to bring that in. That's not a light that you're gonna want on uh, because it's literally signaling the engine and it's telling your engine that it, there's some problems. And I'm looking at our schedule and I said, like, hey, ain't nobody got time for that. So I, uh, I did what any good um, person that has lifted their hand a few moments ago. I, I, I took a flyer to a pizza restaurant and just kind of tucked it where I couldn't see it. And it was so out of sight, out of mind that I literally forgot about it. It went unchecked, it went unguarded, because everything was running right, like it felt fine. The bus was still rolling along, like we were going, we are preaching the good news, the gospel. The Lord's not gonna let anything happen. Amen, let's go. Well, in Boise, Idaho, the bus was like, I'm not gonna run anymore. And we ended up stuck, and if you, were in, if you have a watch party in beautiful Boise, Idaho, <laughs> ooh, it's a... <laughs> It's a lot. Amen. How many of y'all have ever been to Boise, Idaho? Okay, wow. Okay, beautiful. We had a lot of potatoes. It was delicious. Um, met some kind people, but we were stuck in Boise for four premium days because I left something unchecked. I didn't go back and look into what needed to be looked at. The truth is we got stranded. The truth is it cost me way more than it should have. The truth is because I didn't have it checked, what would have been under warranty actually ended up costing us way more than it should have. Here's the takeaway. The truth is this, one component in your life left unchecked or unguarded can bring compromise to the whole structure. It ended up causing us to be stranded. We had to cancel some conferences we were on our way to. If I would have just done my due diligence and said, I should check this, in our spiritual life, there's things that the Holy Spirit is constantly throwing up little lights and saying, you better check yourself or you're gonna wreck yourself. You better check this. You, be you better look into it. You better get in my word over this. You better pray about this. You, you better seek my face on this because that relationship ends up taking you further than you wanted to go. And things end up unraveling for you and you're like, why me? What happened? The light's been on the whole time. You've just been putting duct tape over it. Look at the person next to you and say, this, I think he's in your business. I have a feeling. <laughs> so the same thing is something that we have to look at. The same thing happens in our spiritual life. Watch this. Whatever we attempt to avoid, the devil will attempt to invade. So things unchecked and unguarded in our lives, whatever we attempt to just kind of avoid and, and, and say, God, I'm not going to cast this on you. I'm just going to compartmentalize it. The devil will attempt to invade. The Bible refers to the devil as a thief. The devil is referred to as a deceiver of the brethren. And I'm not a big CSI, like crime show guy, but there is a pattern that most thieves follow. They learn your rhythm, they find a weak point, and lastly, they strike. And if you're a thief in the room, you're like, you can confirm or deny that. And, <laughs> and then we'll pray for you at the end. So I felt like we started at the very end of the Bible talking about who God is, the Alpha and the Omega, but now I wanna go back to the very beginning in the book of Genesis, way back to humanity's story where the Bible records an invasion of the structure that God created for us to live and dwell within. So in Genesis chapter three, verses one through six, it says this on the screen, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the other wild animals that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say? Now, this is the thing about this moment. He didn't say, God didn't say that. No, he used deception. He tried to trick her into, that's why he's the schemer. That's why he's literally constantly and consistently trying to just throw you off with distractions. That's why the spirit of offense is real. 
That's why when the enemy tries to come in and tries to rob you of your heart for God and your relationship with God and he tries to distract you away from the loving kindness of your Savior, he's the deceiver. Come on, somebody say, say out loud, he's the deceiver. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Again, the devil knows God didn't say that. He's tricking her. The woman said to the servant, well, we can eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. The enemy says, the devil says, you will not certainly die. The serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. What's really interesting, and I've said this for years, the devil doesn't, there's no new demon factories. There's no new tricks in the Bible. Every single one of us at some point in our lives can relate to this story. You're like, some of you are like, I don't even eat fruit. <laughs> no, but the tricks of the enemy. How many of y'all have ever had the enemy mess with you, scheme? To, nine of you. Oh, very holy. No, come on. How many of y'all? <laughs> Thank you. Good Lord. It's a new year. Be honest. My, new year, new me. Then be honest. You know what I mean? There's no new tricks of the enemy. It's the same tricks of the enemy. What's really interesting about how he was going about this is it's the same trick of the enemy that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. He wanted to be like God. He, he was taking on the glory himself and ultimately got kicked out. Verse six says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also full of GMOs, by the way, <laughs> and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and she ate it. She also gave it to her husband who was with her and he ate it as well. Why are you telling us this? John 10, 10, Jesus describes Satan as a thief and his methods in this entire story certainly match up. And what I love about the Bible is that when you closely examine the text, in the depth of the word, y'all, it's deep and it's amazing, but there's also something that we can find every day that's practical. We have some of our staff doing the 30 day shred where they're reading the entire Bible in 30 days. Some of you are like, they're very spiritual. It's amazing. I like the one year journey. You can read through the Bible, Genesis to Revelation in one year. But there are different ways that you can dive in. You can go to U version. We even have a Bible study on uh, Bible.com. Hope City does. It's called Hope First. There's lots of opportunities and there's a depth in the Bible, yet there's something practical. And in this Genesis account, we see Satan just showed his hand. We see that he's the deceiver. We see that he twisted what God said and he perverted Eve's perspective. He got in her head. Come on, somebody say, change your mindset. So here's the question. How did Satan know where to find Adam and Eve? He was watching them the entire time. He was watching their patterns and their rhythms. How did he know to exploit them? He found a weak point that he deemed best, and then he struck. Y'all, practically speaking, the first step to resetting your mindset, watch this, is introducing accountability. So we got these sticky statements. How many of y'all have already signed up for the gym membership? <laughs> Super proud of you. I only run if I'm being chased, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, uh, but shout out to everybody who made the big decision New Year's Eve, like, so on January 1, I'm gonna eat really healthy, but then you just, you went off the rails and ate really reckless this week because you knew the fast was coming. Come on, make some noise for all of those people because you're my people. Y'all, I'm not kidding. Friday night, I was, I was eating like I was trying to gain weight for a movie role, and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, babe, the fast is coming. <laughs> the fast. So instead of the new year, new me, new year uh, equals new me, how about new year equals accountability? How about you actually make a conscious decision this year to introduce accountability? And accountability, it's not comfortable. Pruning is never comfortable. But having people in your life that's aren't, that aren't just gassing you up all the time, but instead checking you. In your life, helping you. In your life, speaking into you. We say this all the time, you need people pouring into you, you need to be pouring into others, and you need to have brothers and sisters that are standing with you, lifting your arms, and vice versa, new year accountability. James 5, 16 says it this way, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. 
because the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I've said this for years, but blind spots are called blind spots for a reason because you can't see them. I didn't know that was a blind spot because you can't see it. Blind spots are blind spots. That's why when you introduce trusted voices in your life, you, in, you eliminate the footholds for the enemy to exploit. Another way for us to guard our hearts and our minds is through removing contaminants. My son, Brecken, uh, bought me this bottle a couple years ago, and he was like, Dad, this bottle's incredible. You can literally dip it in the grossest creeks, and then you can drink the water. There's a filter in the bottle. I was like, this is, this is amazing. He's like, you can dip it in. You can just pour it, just pull it. It didn't matter how gross the water is. If you're like in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, I need water, you can just, and it filters it. And I'm telling you, the quality is amazing. I'm looking over this bottle. It's lab tested. And when I was unsure about the quality, I can trust the bottle. When I'm unsure if this water is safe because of this crazy filter that's built for international water and the craziest water, we, not, you know, Flint, Michigan or wherever, I can trust this bottle. It will separate what's essential from what's potentially harmful. And in the natural, no pun intended, the benefit's crystal clear. The same is true with the word of God. Y'all, the word of God is a filter for our, our, our thoughts. The word of God is a filter for us to filter every decision through. That's why this 21 days of prayer and fasting is so essential. If you have a massive decision to make this year, don't avoid 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you've got a diagnosis that you're battling, don't avoid 21 days of prayer and fasting. Consult your doctor on what you can do via fasting, but I need you to hear me. Don't avoid something that could shift and change your life. God is putting, I'm telling you, through his word, he puts in place these incredible scriptures that you can filter your life through. This is what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. This, this right here filters through the murky and the messy things in our lives. It says, for the word of God is alive and active. Come on, somebody say alive and active. This line right here is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts. Come on, say, reset my mindset. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. In simpler terms, one of the main functions of the Bible, again, is it's a filter. The two main purposes with that water bottle and even the word of God with the filter is to remove the contaminants and to preserve quality. So where do these contaminants come from? Y'all, we live in a fallen world. It started all the way back through Adam and Eve's sin that we just read about. And because of that choice, we live in a fallen world full of toxicity and chaos. We live in a fallen world where we can access darkness on our phones and the internet. And we are subject to it and our young people are subject to it and they're being introduced more and more to it. I said this last year, but what happens is when we're not filtering our lives through the word, we get comfortable around tables that Jesus would wanna flip over. We get comfortable around things that we would have never tolerated a year, a year or two or three ago, but now we're like, that's just the way it is. No, it's the spirit of the age. If you read throughout the Bible, the same tricks of the enemy back then are the same things we're dealing with now. I'm preaching better than you're responding. Come on. But we read earlier where the enemy perverted Eve's perspective, but we see the opposite in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 where God is not the author of confusion, but he actually is the God who brings clarity. He brings truth. He brings the good. He turns good from, from evil, and he takes you from nothing to something. He can take you from a rejected perspective into a accepted in the eyes of God perspective, where the devil is considered the father of lies, where everything he says is misinformation. Catch this. If God doesn't say it about you, I need you to have this perspective going into 24. If God didn't say it about you, don't say it about you. If God didn't say it about you, stop saying it about yourself, because you'll believe what you say about yourself more than what others will say. I'm broke as a joke. I've always been broke. My money's always been messy. I never can get ahead. This year is just another year. It's just another calendar. It means nothing. My job's awful. I'm in a dead end. I can't make any money. I'm doing terrible. I'll never own my own house. I'll never, no, no, stop. If God doesn't, because God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God says that everything you put your hand to will prosper. 
God says that you're above and not beneath, that you're the head and not the tail. If God didn't say it about you, don't say it about yourself. Look at the person next to you and say, watch your words. Come on, watch your words. And if there's anything or anyone that has been trying to pull you away from your relationship with God or the local church, then it's not from God. Because again, God's not the author of confusion. If toxic relationships, social media, if these things are bringing confusion to your life, I wanna encourage you, put boundaries up. 21 days, for some of you who maybe medically can't do a fast that involves food, a really good way to detoxify is get off social media. Get, get, get off all of the things that are trying to misinform you. And some of y'all, if you go back to your screen time, you're like, I, I really don't think I spent four hours on TikTok. I don't think that's true. Disconnect, put legitimate boundaries in place so that you can guard your mind, your heart, and you can filter your life through the word of God. And I wanna encourage you in this 21 days, disconnect from the distractions, disconnect from those voices of misinformation. And this month, I wanna encourage you to quit listening to people who are committed to misunderstanding you. Put some boundaries in place and watch what you allow in your ears and your eyes. I've said this before, what you allow in your ears and eyes today will reflect in your heart tomorrow. So watch what you're allowing in and what you have allowed access to. I've just decided this year, I said this last year too, but I don't know, something different changed in me going into 2024. uh, uh, Shade coming from a tree that's bearing no fruit uh, is not gonna phase me any longer. So anybody who might be saying something about you or around you or over you or misinformation about you or that situation that you're dealing with at work, just give it to God and say, God, I'm not gonna allow this to take root any longer, but I'm gonna focus on what God says about me. Come on, somebody say out loud, I'm a king's kid. Let's go. Paul instructs the church of Philippi to focus our lives this way. Watch this. This is a filter. Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brothers and sisters... Whatever's true, I love this verse. I did this in my Bible study uh, midway through the end of last year. Whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. Come on, say it one more time. I'm gonna change my mindset. So here's some biblical filters you can run your heart and your thoughts through another two verses, Romans chapter eight, verse six. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Ooh, it's pretty heavy. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. James 1, eight says a double-minded man. Some of you ladies are like, well, that's good, that doesn't include us. No, that's everybody. A double-minded man is unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. So again, We see where the enemy perverted Eve's perspective and caused her to go down a path where God said, listen, you can have all of this, but just don't go near this. These three verses that we just read and other verses throughout the Bible, again, act as filters for us. And through this 21 days of prayer, every morning when you get up, Pastor Brandon did the devotional this morning. Every morning when you wake up, put that, put your armor of God on, Ephesians 6, Put your feet of peace on, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Grab that shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and the helmet of salvation, and then get in the word. And allow that filter to begin to filter your perspective so that the enemy can't distort your perspective. God has given us his word as a filter so that we can see truth from fiction, so that we can see facts from counterfeit. And when the world seems dark, this is what the word says. Psalms 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I was in um, San Diego and uh, I was uh, at this leadership thing and there was, there's an author there named Bob Goff and it's his, uh, it's his facility. And uh, I was walking down this path and, and as I was walking, I can't, I can't, I literally can't explain this other than I felt this like nudge. It wasn't a voice like, Daniel. And I'm like, yes, Lord. No, I felt this nudge like, turn on your flashlight. And, and I pulled out my iPhone and I turned on my, my light. I haven't done, I was, I was there four nights. I hadn't had to do this. But that particular night, I was walking back to my cabin slash room and I felt like the, I felt this nudge 
this discernment, this, this Holy Spirit intuition, turn on your flashlight. And I literally thought, this is going to look really dumb. Like, nobody else has their flashlights. <laughs> I don't want to look like that guy. You know the guy that like pulls his phone out and it's like in his pocket and you're like, hey man, your light's on. You're like, what are you talking about? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> So I turned on my flashlight, y'all, and, and I wasn't doing this. I was doing this. It was a light into my path, and I'm not playing. About 15 feet onto this path, there was a coiled up rattlesnake right off to the side, and I said, not today, devil, <laughs> and I squealed, and I ran around it. Hey, Amen. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I don't think they could bite through my J's, but I didn't know. But the Lord is like, hey, if you have been living in the dark, if you maybe all of 23 felt like you were in the shadows and there was a heaviness, apply the word of God to your life and allow it to be a lamp to your feet. Allow it to be a light to your path. God will sustain us this year. I'm gonna give you three quick takeaways of what I believe we can experience in week one as we are resetting and leaning into this new beginning of 2024. Number one, write this down. This is our foundation. Jesus is the reset. If that's the only reason you came this weekend, and it seems super simplistic, but the answer really does begin with and end with Jesus. Jesus is ultimately the reset. Not your 401k. Not your 403b. Not your retirement plans and your Dave. Uh, 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 what's his name? Money Maxwell? What is the, not Dave Ramsey, 30 day money makeover where you're paying everything off. All of that's amazing. I love getting all of that aligned. But Jesus, he's the reset. The foundation of everything we do has to be built from here. I was talking to somebody the other day. They're building a house. They show up to the house and they had poured their concrete in their their sidewalk and the sidewalk about halfway through had sunk. And then their electric box off to the side had sunk. And I said, who, who did this? <laughs> like where, and did you get a professional? We just tried to do it ourselves. And they realized very quickly that their foundation was faulty. They hadn't set up, they rushed the process. You can't rush your foundation. Because when the wind and the storms come this year, this is a big like charge and challenge. 24 is gonna be amazing. Give God praise. And it's going to be. But there also will be storms and challenges. There will also be winds and waves. There will also be things that we have to combat and, and fight. And thank God we have a God that's standing with us who's stronger and bigger than the enemy who's trying to stand against us. Come on, I believe that. But it's really, really important to have our foundation, sure, because I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, you know, hurricanes come and when you're in the middle of a storm like that, you wonder if it's ever going to end. But the thing about a storm is eventually it runs out of rain. Eventually the clouds will run out of rain and your foundation better be established or like the man in Matthew that Jesus talked about who built his house on the sand, it will fall. Your life will fall apart. We don't want that to happen. Look, elbow the person next to you and say, don't be that guy. So number one, Jesus is the reset. What does this mean? Where Adam opened the door to death, Jesus died on the cross to bring us eternal life. Where Adam opened the door to sin, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin that we might be the righteousness of Christ. Where Adam opened the door to shame and condemnation, Jesus, through the death, the burial, and the resurrection can bring us freedom. And through the sin of Adam, we experience separation from God. But because of the price, come on somebody, that Jesus paid on the cross, we get to experience restoration. We get to experience relationship with the living God. So where Adam opened the door to chaos, Jesus came and bridged the gap between God and humanity so that we could have relationship. Romans 5 verse 17 on the screen, for it, for it was by the trespass of one, Adam, death reigned through the one, Adam, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in eternal life through the one, Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for the grace of God. How many of y'all are grateful for the grace of God? For every goof up, the mercies 
for every mistake that are new every single morning. Jesus didn't just come and hang on the cross to, to undo what Adam did. He did so much more. He came because he knew you by name. He, he came because he knew the situations and the sins and the struggles that you would face, and he did it. He hung on the cross. He died and rose again on the third day because he said you were valuable, because he said you were worth it. Where Adam opened these, the door to chaos and the fallen world we're in, we can experience the grace and the mercy of God on the daily because of the price that Jesus paid. So number one, Jesus is the reset. Number two, write this one down, maintenance is required. This is the thing about relationship. There's moments every day where Pastor Jackie teaches me lessons. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ever teach her anything, but she's always like, L look at me. You need to listen, okay? <laughs> now, maintenance is required. For us to have a healthy relationship, we have to make an investment. Maintenance is required, which is why 21 days of prayer and fasting is not just something we throw on the calendar and we're like, what? Everybody else is doing it. I guess we should do it. No, we set apart this time in January and August. August is the eighth month of the year, which means new beginnings. So we set aside 21 days of prayer. Some of you are like, okay, so February, March, April, May, June, July, I can eat. And then, <laughs> no, we set it aside. Why? Because maintenance is required. Because walking in relationship with God, getting in the word of God, allowing him to do an alignment check so that you don't drift off and get stuck in a rut, maintenance is required. I have a friend who gave his son a car, and he said, here's the deal. I'm going to bless you with this car. It wasn't over the top. It was a nice, efficient, nice, paid-off car. He said, I'm going to bless you with this car, but here's the key. He took him to the place and said, you have to, every 3,000 or 6,000, you're doing synthetic, it's on your, your, your dime. He said, well, can I use your car? He said, no, it's on you. I bought you the car, but you have to put gas in it, and you have to get the oil changed and tire rotated. The t not one, just the tires. <laughs> get them on. <laughs> just one tire. No, get the oil changed and tires rotated. Okay, I'm gonna just say it. They're gonna put the sticker on the thing. Okay, every 5,000 miles. Okay, that's what I'm gonna have you do. And, and, and the dad said, but look at me. If the car stops running, if it stops working, because you have not maintained it, it's not on me. He was trying to teach him. So about a year and a half in, it was a Honda. It lasted a lot longer than it should have. He never got the oil changed. He never rotated the tires. His dad came out. The tires were wearing funny. It was down to the ribbing. He checked the oil. It barely had any oil. I think the kid was putting like Gatorade in there. Because <laughs> maintenance is required just like that check engine light that I covered up with electrical tape or that pizza flyer. Maintenance is required so we don't have bigger problems down the road. 2 Corinthians 10 says this instructs us in the process of redirecting our thoughts. That's why when I say maintenance is required, I love almost every day, I take a moment and I just say, God, am I okay with you? It's not out of fear or condemnation. I just say, is there anything that's blocking my ability to hear your voice right now? Because if there is, I need you to take it. Open hand and I'm gonna cast my cares on you. John chapter three, verse 30. I need you to increase, become more as I decrease. 2024, I want more of you and less of me. 2024, I need more. Come on, somebody. But I'm gonna redirect. I need to hear your voice. Maintenance is required. I want to take captive. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, it instructs us to take captive every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If there's something in your life that's trying to mess with your ability to move through life aligned with the heart of God, maintenance is required Proverbs chapter four, verse 23 on the screen says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. How many of y'all have ever had your heart broken? You know what it's like in the natural. You know what it's like to open the door to something that you know, oh, I shouldn't have done that. A toxic decision, a toxic ideology, something that has been drawing you away. You have to get back in the presence of God and say, God, this is a new year, and open-handed, I'm gonna shift my mindset and my heart to guard my heart above all else because I want my life to be synced with your heart. 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm gonna say it one more time. This is my last infomercial pitch. Well, I'll do it one more time, actually, again at the end. Join us this week. Join us this next Saturday. Show up. The only way, oh, I'm not even that good at praying. The only way to fail in prayer is to not show up. 
is to not just position yourself in a posture. And it can, it can be like, hey, now you might, you know, some of you are a little bit more like hyper-spiritual, so you're like, sky daddy. Um, <laughs> told you I was punchy. I don't know what it is. No, but, but, but you don't have to be eloquent in your speech. You don't have to pray in King James Version. No, it's as simple as, hey, Lord, it's me. I know you know it's me. You shaped and molded me in Genesis 127 in my mom's womb. And uh, you see my, my faults. You see my struggles. You see my compartmentalized pain. You see, you see stuff I've been dragging through life in a box that should be given to you, but I'm holding on to it brokenness from maybe when I was a kid. And some of you, this is your story and you've just kind of walked through life and maybe you feel ashamed or maybe you don't feel, feel worthy. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by decisions that you've made. You don't have to be eloquent in your speech. Paul said, it's not my perfect words. It's the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. He just wants you to yield. He just wants you to surrender he wants you to redirect the things that have been trying to hold you bound. The stuff that has messed with you. I don't know who I'm speaking to, daughter of God. The thing that robbed you of your purity, that's broken you to the point where you feel unworthy. He's a God who sees you. He can restore and fix and heal. All the things that you've been putting band-aids over, he can put stitches. How do you know this, Pastor Daniel? Because he's the great physician. And if you'll lean in over the next 21 days, I'm telling you, God will do a work in you and restore and heal. And you can look back a month from now, 21 days from now, a year from now, three years from now, and say, I remember when God got a hold of my heart and he healed me. Come on, somebody give God praise ahead of time. <laughs> Woo. All right, number three, this is it. Because life's a vapor, we're here today. The Bible says we're gone tomorrow, but when you walk in relationship with Jesus, and you realize the earthly assignment that God has for your life. Number three, write this down. We win. Because Jesus won and he defeated the grave and he defeated death. Death, where is your sting? And he conquered the enemy's plan. We win. The very beginning of today, we saw again in Revelation 1a where he's the alpha and the omega where he's the beginning and the end, where he is the one who is, the one who was, the one who is still to come. He was, meaning he will always be there. Before time began, from the moment you were conceived, he was there. He is, he is your faithful father. Close your eyes for a moment. He's your faithful friend. He's your very present help, the one who protects, watches over and rescues you and is to come, meaning that now, that now and forever we will worship. And right now we worship the unseen Jesus, but the hope of every believer is that one day we'll see Jesus face to face. I need you to hear this. Every wrong is made right in his presence. Every broken thing to be restored. We live from victory because at the end of the day, we win because Jesus won. With every eye closed, I feel this prophetically to speak this over someone today in week number one of the reset your comeback this year is gonna be greater than the setback that you faced last year. And as you step into 2024, your comeback is going to be shocking. And everybody that said that you're not gonna make it and that you're never gonna to amount to anything, you're gonna show them because God is gonna show off through your life. God, I pray that today that there's a reset, a supernatural reset in our mindset to recognize that Jesus, you're the reset to recognize that maintenance is required, that we have to be in your presence. It's not something that we can be flipping about. A relationship with you is essential. It is our foundation. Number three, God, I thank you that you're, you've written, you're continuing to write victory in our stories. God, I pray today that every single person with confidence will move forward, not being drawn back to their past, not clinging to things that once were, that once were, but instead, God, we look towards where you're taking us and you're starting a new thing. You're starting a new thing and it's beautiful. 
But the Bible says very specifically, do you not see it? We don't want to be so caught up in the things that have been robbing us of our best life. And we want to be able to see what you're doing. Will you stand to your feet? And will you just lift your hands towards heaven in a posture of surrender? And will you allow Jesus to be the reset in your life? This is how I want to close out today. And we're going to sing for a moment. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity if you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Then Pastor Brandon and Kristen will come out and close out the very end. But will you lift your hands towards heaven? God, I thank you for the reset. Just say this out loud. Jesus, I need a reset. I need a redo. I, I need you to renew areas of my life that I've been broken in. So here's my shame. Here's my struggles. Here's my frustrations. And I'm going to have a new mindset stepping into this new year. So now right now with our hands lifted, there's a throwback song that I could not get out of my heart. I told Rodney, I said, I want to sing this. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. Come on. Woodlands, come on, Katie, say, I come on, sing it like you believe it, sing it like it's true, shout it out. commitment is to lean in, to move in the direction where you're moving, where you're lighting up our path, putting a lamp at our feet. God, in our hearts, Proverbs 16, 9, it says the humans will determine their course, but it's you, O oh God, that will establish our steps. God, we thank you that you are ordaining and leading us this year with your hands down just for a moment. I want to give you two opportunities as we kick off week number one. 2024 in the reset. The first invitation is this. Pastor Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. That line, Jesus is the reset. I need that in my life. I need a reset. I've never given my life to Jesus, but today I want to surrender my life. Here's what we believe at Hope City, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Sins is thrown as far as the east as the west, never to throw it in your face again. He's writing victory in your story. Or maybe the second invitation, you would say, Pastor Daniel, here's the truth. I don't know Jesus uh, like I used to. 
I have fallen away. I, I used to live for him, but I got caught up in the prodigal life. And I want to come back and align my heart to God. I need a reset. And I believe that Jesus is the reset. And I want to surrender my life all over again today, fall back in the arms of God. I have felt unworthy. I have felt consumed by condemnation and shame. But today I felt hope because hope has a name and his name is Jesus. So I'm gonna to count to three and I want you to boldly lift up your hand at Woodlands here at West Houston. At Katie, if you're watching online, just say yes to Jesus. Our team will help you there, our moderators and team. But one, Pastor Dan, I wanna give my life to Jesus for the very first time. Two, Pastor Daniel, I need Jesus to be the reset of my life. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over, I see you and you, I see you and you, I see you and you and you, I see you, my friend, I see you, I see you, I see you and you, I see you, I see you in the back, I see you, my friend, right here in the middle, I see you, daughter of God, I saw you right there, I see you all the way over there. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise for everybody who just said you're talking about me? Okay, here's what I wanna do, I want everybody, everybody to pray this prayer because the truth is God didn't need to see your hand but he saw your heart so can we all pray this together say Jesus it's me from this moment on I'm making a decision to live for you here's all my sin here's all my shame all my struggles I'm asking for your forgiveness Jesus thank you for hanging on that cross exchanging your life for mine dying that day getting up out of the grave on the third day so that I could have freedom and live in peace and carry the hope of, of Jesus. From this moment on, I'm gonna live for you. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.